Have you ever seen artwork that's just so fantastically bizarre you can't look away? Do I have the Telecaster for you? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodyte's Guitar Show. Alright, so I was talking to my buddy in Japan, and he sent me this Telecaster that is just so fantastically out there. We had to cover this. And I had to know the true story. Did this really leave Fender's factory looking like this? No. No, it did not. This is a custom job in a roundabout way. So I found the artist on Facebook. They go by Art of Sweet Dub. This person is an artist in Thailand that likes to use acrylic paints. And it's looking to me that this guitar shop custom commissioned this. So, uh, let's go ahead and check this Telecaster out. Oh man, there's so much to go over. Well, let's start right here. We get a, a puppy dog on an octopus's body. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. We get little devil balloons with a fiendish smile looking up to where they're going. They're pretty much all over this whole thing. But yeah, at the same time, this little pug is like eating spaghetti or something. Okay, all right, continuing on here, it looks like we have some sort of like a mint stuck in the ground, you know, like these peppermint things. They might also just be the top part of like a candy cane because usually the peppermints, they go directly in the center now. So this could just be a really crooked over candy cane because that would almost make even more sense. The way that the stripes are going on these. Believe me, I used to work in a candy factory for a couple of months. And this one over here, it almost seems to have come out a little bit more, okay. So in that aspect, are these actually meant to be devil lollipops? Because they kind of have a stick coming from them. I was just assuming that they're coming from this candy lake, but you know, if we're going with a candy theme here, okay. But then we get a, a mushroom with a single eye that appears to have a tail and feet. <laughs> Oh man, it's just so crazy. You can't look away from this. I mean, imagine playing this thing on stage and we've only looked at this little part of it. So moving on over here, it looks like we got some more of the same stuff going on. But this, this right here is the flying spaghetti monster that people have been telling you about your whole life. I can see one, two, three eyes. There might be more, I'm not sure. Yeah, and then we get up here and it gets a little bit crazier. We get a little goat dude up here. Might not be the best guitar to take to church on Sundays. But, I mean, other than that, it's just kind of a regular Telecaster. Did the artist do anything on the back? And the answer to that is yes. Now this, I can almost appreciate a little bit more on an artistic aspect. It's a little less crazy. We got some more of those little mints coming out of the ground. Now over here, they look more so like a peppermint, but yet they've been deformed, like they're trying to go between dimensions or something, you know, top to the back. Some sort of like a river beach-like scene. But yeah, there's like a tar pit right here before you get to this other stuff. And then we just get cool little cloud guys. Now this reminds me of like Kirby level territory, you know, just a single eye guy. You know, we're talking about this boss. So this side's not quite as crazy. I think more people could appreciate the art style. But judging by the photos, it looks like the artist even went as far as doing the edges of the guitar. And that's always a big like pet peeve of mine. If you do the front, you need to do the back and sides too. And this artist did not disappoint me. You can see the continuation of your spaghetti monster. But I find it kind of surprising that the artist just left the pick guard completely blank. Maybe they decided that uh, they didn't want to risk it being worn off if somebody were to play it. I can understand that. It's definitely a nice artistic choice. Did they go as far as painting underneath the pick guard? Like, was just the body sent to them? Because it doesn't look like the neck was ever messed with. Even on the back, that is completely devoid of it. So maybe this shop just got this custom shop tally in. They, they just took the neck off, sent the body down to this artist and had him do their thing. So is there something even crazier hiding underneath the pick guard? Unfortunately, we don't know. I mean, look at him. That guy's looking at something. There's got to be something attracting to them under there. And it's not just the screws right above their head. But yet, at the same time, there's evidence that that might not be the case because we get some sort of a signature back here. I don't know if that's the artist or not. I would assume so, but who knows. But this did start life as a Fender Custom Shop model. So this was premium grade timber that was painted with great pickups. It looked like it had some sort of aging job done to the neck as well, but let's read more into the specs. 
It was described as a Fender Custom Shop Closet Classic, a Pine Telecaster Pro. And it looks like these were done somewhere around 2011 or so. I'm not 100% familiar, so I could be wrong on this. But the original price was $4,380, and it included a blonde case. But what made these things interesting is right here. A 100-year-old pine was used to create this run of instruments. I can't quite seem to make out the serial number to see if that's part of the same run or not. But that certainly matches up with the seller story here. 100 year old pine body that ended up like this. I'm sure there's some guitar fans that might be upset that after 100 years this is how it ends up, but I think it adds to the whole vibe of this thing. Kind of being a little bit crazy that it has a really old body just to add to all the lore that you could tell with this telly. It looks like we're rocking 22 frets with all the original case candy and stuff as a COA, and it is one of a kind. Now, unfortunately, I, I don't know what it sold for. I don't even know what they were asking. Were they asking a huge premium, or were they selling it at a discount? I'm guessing it had some sort of a premium to it, but somebody fell in love with this thing, and it, it was too crazy not to share. So I need you to let me know down in the comments section, would you rock the spaghetti monster puppy dog octopus psychedelic guitar or not? I don't even know what to call it, but it's certainly interesting. And if you happen to enjoy this, you can check out this person's artwork. Not all of it is as out there as that one. Like this one, we get a girl with some goldfish and a little bluebird. There's a lot of things that you could think that this would symbolize. I'm guessing this might be the artist herself here. Either that or it's just a photo on her page. And then we get an elongated Furby, which gave her inspiration for this. So whether or not this art is your style or not, I think we can all agree. It's good artwork. There's definitely a lot of talent that goes into producing these works. And it seems like her Alice in Wonderland theme might have played out into this Telecaster, because here we can see those mints. And, and the hills have eyes. But this has to be my absolute favorite piece of hers. I mean... Who thinks it? just, uh, let's put an eye on a tooth. It grabs your attention. Oh man, and I never even seen the little tarantula guy up there. Interesting stuff. But don't worry, I'm not becoming an art review channel. <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, hunt a couple other guitars tonight just to balance things out here. Here we've got an interesting 98 ES-135 in like a, a light green pastel-esque finish. And yet we got the P94 pickups. I'm not sure if those are stock. I'm really not even familiar with this model. But it seems to be similar to the ones that we have been reviewing. Because we've got the sharp Florentine cut right there. Two F-holes. Colors like these just happen to work really well for rockabilly type music. So having the Bigsby and all that, that definitely makes sense. But man, that is a long travel for those guys. They're going to be ringing up a storm. I don't think I've ever had a P94. It's basically a P90 within a humbucker. Oh, and now, now I'm seeing this. It's kind of got a creamed out binding. And they really need that on the neck to complete the vibe of this one. Maestro by Gibson. I don't think I've ever seen one like that. But then again, I don't look at too many of these guitars, but I'm starting to. And just a rather plain headstock there. Yeah, can't say I've ran into one of these before. I dig the color. But at 3200 bucks, I, I don't know if I like it that much. There's... A lot more guitars I would purchase before that. And now I'm having like a deja vu moment. I swear I've talked about this guitar before a long time ago. Yeah, here's one. One off custom color. Willow green. Okay, so this was purchased before. So this is not a color that you're normally going to find. So this owner owned it for 15 to 20 years. And he bought it at Dave's Guitar Shop. Okay, they're still around. So you could verify that story. I guess now that I know it's a custom order... I could be willing to pay a little bit more. I mean, it seems like these ES-135s, they don't show up too much. But I'm also noticing that Reverb is purging a lot of the sold listings, making researching guitar values kind of difficult. I wonder if there's a certain time frame that they're just starting to not even show. You can still find them through Google searches and stuff. I suppose we should make sure this is actually the same guitar. So ending in 409. 
I can't quite see it on my screen, but you guys might be able to. It looks like this is the same guitar, 409. The lack of description and story, though, is a little bit disheartening when the other guy, you know, pours his soul out and tells you everything. But this one is at Steve Guitars at Lay's. It seems to have some sort of a pedigree behind it. Now that I know it's a custom order, and it's kind of an uncommon model, it really depends, is anybody actually looking for this thing, or is it obscure for a reason? The price certainly makes a little bit more sense, though. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's kind of strange episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.